Double Trouble Groundhog Day by Bethany Roberts One fall evening, on Weathervane Mountain, the Groundhog family gathered in their burrow. They were enjoying one final fill and feast before their long winter nap. The twins, Gregory and Greta, fought over the last piece of pumpkin pie. I got it, said Gregory. I got it first, cried Greta. Gregory poked Greta. Greta bumped Gregory. Gregory twisted Greta's tail. Greta pulled Gregory's ear. Twins, said Daddy Groundhog, shaking his head. Double trouble, said Granny Groundhog with a smile. Late breaking news! Late breaking news! Grumpy Groundhog stood up and clinked his glass. There's a change in the wind, he announced. As you know, every year on the second day in February, I pop out of the ground. If I see my shadow, there will be six more weeks of winter. If I don't see my shadow, we'll spring into spring. Gregory stopped poking Greta to listen. Greta stopped bumping Gregory to listen. But I'm getting too old and a bit under the weather, said Grampy. So I'm turning our family forecasting job over to one of you. The twins jumped up and down. I'll do it, cried Gregory. No, I want to do it, cried Greta. Me, said Gregory. Me, 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 cried Greta. We will draw straws, said Granny Groundhog. The one with the longest straw will get the job. Gregory pushed his glasses back on his nose. I'll be in all the newspapers, he said. I'll be on TV, Greta said. She danced a happy star dance all around the room. Greta, you pick first, said Grampy. Greta stopped dancing, squeezed her eyes tight, and wished. Then she picked a straw. I get the job, cried Gregory. I'll be famous. He looked at himself in the mirror. Gregory the Great. Gregory the Gross, said Greta. Poor loser, said Gregory. Greta stuck out her tongue. Gregory chased Greta with a pillow. Twins, said Mom Groundhog, shaking her head. Double trouble, said Grampy with a wink. Time for bed, said Dad Groundhog. The word is counting on you, Gregory. You betcha, said Gregory, brushing his teeth. Gregory the Great, word famous forecaster, preparing for bed. Greta rolled her eyes. Gregory set his alarm clock for February 2nd. Soon everyone was sound asleep. Except Gregory. Let's see, he thought. If I see my shadow, I say spring will come soon. No, no, that's if I don't see my shadow. If I don't see my shadow, I say it will be winter for six more weeks. No, that's if I see my shadow. Gregory drifted off to sleep. In his dreams, weather maps swirled, umbrellas had teeth, and giant mittens chased him. Still asleep, Gregory slowly got out of his bed and popped out of the hole. He stood up on a stump and waved his eyeglasses. Six more shadows, he shouted. Winter is springing soon. He crawled under his warm quilt and fell into a deep sleep for the rest of the winter. Ring! The alarm clock rang. Gregory woke up. It was February 2nd. But Gregory was still sound asleep. Gregory, wake up! cried Greta. You have to forecast the weather. Gregory moaned. I'm so tired. Greta danced a wake-up dance around the room. Gregory plopped his pillow over his eyes. Greta tickled him. Gregory pulled the covers over his head. Greta blew a trumpet. Mm, go away, Gregory whined. If you don't get up, said Greta, how will farmers know when to plant crops? How will fathers know if they need fishing rods or fire logs? How will mothers know if they should pack picnics or bake bread? And how will children know if they need umbrellas and kites or sleds and mittens? Umbrellas have teeth, Gregory mumbled. Giant mittens. Umbrellas don't have teeth and mittens are small, said Greta. You must have had a bad dream. Are you getting stage fright? I'm a little nervous, admitted Gregory from under the covers. Gregory rolled over and opened one eye. Then he opened the other eye. Everything was a blur. Where are my glasses? he asked. Where did you put them? asked Greta. I don't know. All I can remember is something about shadows, said Gregory. They looked under the quilt. They looked inside the dresser. They looked inside his slippers. They looked everywhere. But Gregory's glasses could not be found. 
This gets worse and worse, moaned Gregory. How can I see my shadow if I can't see my own paw in front of my face? I'll help you, said Greta. Hurry, the world is waiting. Greta grabbed Gregory, and together they came out of the hole. Lights flashed. Cameras rolled. Reporters yelled. Am I seeing double? asked Mayor Moose. Hey, there are two groundhogs, cried the TV crew. So, what's your prediction? asked reporter Jack Rabbit. Tell us, tell us, shouted the crowd. There is no shadow, Greta whispered into Gregory's ear. Gregory's knee shook. He took a deep breath. There is no, no shadow, he squeaked. Spring will come soon, added Greta. Spring, hooray, shouted the reporters. Spring, hooray, shouted the crowd. And here are your glasses, right under the stump. You must have been sleepwalking, said Greta. Everyone waved groundhog banners. They held groundhog balloons. The band began to play the groundhog stomp. Everyone danced and sang. Later that day, the twins went to the newsstand. The Groundhog Gazette headline read, No trouble, and that's double. But I would have been in trouble without your help, said Gregory. We make a great team. You betcha, said Greta, hugging him. Gregory waved the newspaper. I'll show this to Grampy, he said. No, I will, I will, cried Greta. Greta twisted Gregory's tail. Gregory pulled Greta's ear. Greta chased Gregory down the hill, around the bush, and into the burrow. By thunder, said Grampy, looking at the newspaper. You two are sure fine forecasters. Not a shadow of a doubt. Gregory pushed his glasses back onto his nose. I can't wait until we can do it next year, he said. We? asked Greta. Of course, said Gregory. Greta grinned. Make that double.